I'm going to read something to you guys from the Bible that's going to um, make you all see the world and the powers that be, the, 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 the powers that govern the world in a different light. God has, basically the scriptures that I'm about to read to you is going to reveal to you that God has allotted to every district of the earth. He's allotted to his sons, his angelic sons, to govern different parts of the world. And not every single one of them has been holding up to their end. In fact, some of them have gone along with the devil and the devil's agenda. Or something to that effect. Now, I'm going to read three different passages. I'm debating on which one I should read to you guys first. But I'm going to read to the one that's going to make you think first. Deuteronomy chapter 30, 32 verse 8. What's interesting about this chapter is that all the other chapters in Deuteronomy is written regularly. But the chapter in Deuteronomy, but the chapter of um, chapter 32 in Deuteronomy is written as if it is something unique from all the other passages. And not only is it unique from all the other passages, but this is where one of the one of the secrets is like revealed once you come to see it. Let me start. Deuteronomy chapter 32. I'm going to start from verse verse 6. Is it to Jehovah that you keep doing this way? O people, stupid and not wise. Is he not your father who has produced you? He who made you and proceeded to give you stability. Remember the days of old. Consider years back from generation to generation. Ask your father and he can tell you. Your old men, they can say it to you. When the Most High gave the nations an inheritance, when he parted the sons of Adam from one another, he proceeded to fix the boundary of the peoples with regard for the number of the sons of Israel. Now it says here, with regard to the number of the sons of Israel, there is a great debate on this passage. Another translation reads it this way. When the Most High assigned lands to the nations, when he divided up the human race, he established the boundaries of the peoples according to the number of his heavenly court, according to the number of his angelic sons. Another translation says, according to the number of his heavenly realm. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 8. Now, I'm going to come back to this and you'll see why these other translations are more accurate than the translation where it says the sons of Israel. Because the context wouldn't even make sense that God um, organized the, lot, the, 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 the boundaries of the whole world according to the sons of Israel. No. According to the sons of Israel, the boundaries are according to the lands close to Israel, or close to the promised land. But not the whole world based on the sons of Israel. No, based on his angelic sons, based on his heavenly court. Now, follow me. Psalms chapter 82, verse 1 through 7. Let me lock this so I don't lose it. As a matter of fact, let me put this here. Oh, I already lost it. It's all right. Psalms 82, verse 1 through 7. God is stationing himself in the assembly of the divine one. In the middle of the gods, he judges. How long will you keep on judging with injustice and showing partiality to the wicked themselves? Be judges for the lowly one and the fatherless boy, to the afflicted one and the, and the one of, of little means do justice. Provide escape for the lowly one and the poor one. Out of the hand of the wicked ones, deliver them. They have not known and they do not know understanding. In the darkness, they keep walking about. All the foundations of the earth are made to totter. I myself have said, you are gods. All of you are sons of the Most High. Surely you will die as men do. 
And like any one of the princes, you will fall. I myself have said, you are gods, sons of the Most High. But you will die as men do. So that means these judges are not men, but they will die as men do. Doesn't that remind you of the scripture in Ezekiel about how the devil said, I will climb to the mountain. I will climb to the highest parts of the, of the north. I will climb above the assembly of God, above the judges of God, and I will make myself like the most high. But you will, but God will throw him to the valley of the death. He will die as men do. You said in your heart that you will be like God, but you will die as men do. I myself have said you are gods, but you will die as men do. He's speaking of the judges of Israel. He's speaking of the judges of the earth, the judges of different districts. He has made them gods. He himself is calling them gods, but they are not doing their job correctly, and they will die as men do. Let's go to Daniel chapter 10, verse 13. Daniel was supposed to receive a message from a certain angel, but the message was taking, took him 20 days or 21 days before he got the message because another angel was battling with the angel that God sent. Now, that angel that was battling with this angel was a prince or one of the gods of Persia. Perhaps one that God assigned that portion to him. Well, let's read it. Daniel chapter 10, verse 13. No, yeah, 10 verse 13. It says here, okay, let's start from 12. And he went on to say to me, do not be afraid, O Daniel, for from the first day that you gave your heart to understanding and humbling yourself before God, your words have been heard. I myself have come because of your words. But the prince of the royal realm of Persia was standing in opposition to me for 21 days. And look, Mikael, one of the foremost princes, came to help me. And I, for my part, remained there beside the kings of Persia. And I came to cause you to discern what will befall in the last part of the days. Basically, what's going on here is that an angel was sent by God to deliver a message to Daniel. But another angel, who is called here the prince of Persia, remember prince also means a king or, or like a god of a certain realm, okay? The prince of Persia, who is also another angelic being, it has to be an angelic being because he resisted the angel that God sent. So one angel is holding back another angel whom God has sent. But this angel is called the prince of Persia. So he is a governing, he is a God of Persia. But God said that long ago when he divided the boundaries of the, of the earth and he gave it and he divided it according to the sons of his angelic realm, according to the sons of the heavenly court. Persia got one, one, um, Persia got one God. This country gets another God. That country gets another God. This country gets another God. But as far as Israel, their God is God. Now, let's go back to Deuteronomy 32, verse 8, and let's read it with this newfound understanding. Deuteronomy 32, verse 8. When the Most High assigned lands to the nations, when He divided up the human race, he established the boundaries of the peoples according to the number in his heavenly court or according to the number of his angelic sons. The prince of Persia, according to Daniel chapter 10, verse 13, there was a prince of Persia. There was a, there was a, there was a governmental body. There was a celestial being that was governing the nation of Persia that resisted an angel that was sent by God to deliver a message to Daniel. So while the angel was on his way to meet Daniel, the prince of Persia, whom perhaps perhaps God allotted that nation to him, according to the according to God's heavenly court, according to the angelic sons of God. But this angelic son of God, who is 
over the land of Persia has not been doing well. He has not been doing right in the eyes of God because the Persian nations are pagan and they are disgusting and they've been doing many things that God does not like, which is why in Psalms chapter 82 verse um, verse, verse um, 5, it says, God is telling them, they have not known and they do not, under and they do not understand and darkness they keep walking about. He says, I myself have said you are gods. You are all sons of the Most High. You, Prince of Persia, you are you are a son of the Most High. I have given you this, perhaps this, you know. Didn't God give the nations of the world to the devil? Isn't the devil a god of this wicked system of things? But surely you will die as men do. The devil is trying to be like God, but he will die as men do. These angels are called sons of God, but they will die as men do. When the Most High assigned the lands to the nations, when he divided up the human race and established the boundaries of the people according to the number of his heavenly court or according to the number of his heavenly army or according to the number of his angelic sons. It is not according to the number of the sons of Israel. It wouldn't make sense if it was according to the number of sons of Israel. The sons of Israel were not established before, before um, at a time when God started putting boundaries on the nations. And Notice how much more sense it makes when you say that they are the sons, according to the sons of his, of his, of, according to the number of his angelic sons. God is saying, when you finish reading that passage in chapter, in verse eight, it says, for Jehovah's share is his people. Jacob is his allotment that he has inherited. So while Persia is inherited by another prince, while let's say Babylon, Babylonia is inherited is the share of another God. Jehovah is saying that his share is his people. His allotted land is Jacob, Israel. Jacob's other name is Israel. You see, so every nation have their gods, but, but the nation of Israel, their God is Jehovah. You see? So again, when the Most High assigned lands to the nations, when he divided up the human race, he established the boundaries of the people according to the number of his heavenly army. And in verse 9, But Jehovah's share is his people. His allotment is Jacob. The prince of Persia, his allotment is Persia. The prince of Babylon, his allotment is Babylon. The prince of whatever nations are in Africa, their allotment is, is whatever nations are in Africa. But Jehovah's or Jehovah's allotment is the nation of Israel. But the prince of Persia, he hasn't been doing his job correctly. That is why he's going to die as men do. The other nations, they haven't been doing their job correctly. The devil is trying to prove a point against God. He hasn't been doing a good job. He will die as men do. You see, there's a... And then also, this takes me back to another um thing that I, I, I came to discover. I hope I wasn't blocking the microphone, man. I'll have to do the video again if, if that's the case. That'll suck. But, um... That reminds me of another passage. Remember um, where it says that the devil in Revelation, it says the devil drew with his, tail, with his tail a third of the stars in heaven. That is the angelic beings. Perhaps that expression is talking about how the devil convinced a third of the angels to prove his case against God. Because check this out. You know the angels that came, some say that reference in Revelation is talking about the, the days of Noah. the son, When the sons of the true God took notice of the daughters of men that they were good looking and, and they materialized themselves into men and took all the women that they wanted, right? Some say 